education. We have with us most entrancing personality as our chief guest, Honorable Dr. Aruna Palta, ma'am, Vice Chancellor, Hem Chand Yadav Vishwidyale, Durg Chhattisgarh. And today's very ingenious keynote speaker, Dr. Ramesh Chandraji Kothari, former Vice Chancellor, Veer Narmad South Gujarat University, Surat, Gujarat. I also welcome Honorable Mr. Harjit Singh Hura, Secretary, Jan Pragati Education Society, our principal, Dr. Arun Kumar Dubey, sir, all the delegates from all over India. I must mention we have received more than 600 100 participants covering all, almost each state of our country. This four days national series has commenced from today and providing the overview of national education policy by Honorable Dr. Ramesh Chandraji Kothari. On the very second day, that is on 17th October, our resource person will be Professor Khader from NCRT. He will illuminate us the critical perspective of National Education Policy 2020. On 18th October, Dr. Ch Taruna Chaudhary Dhal, former professor, Institute of Teacher Training and Research, will elucidate NEP and sustainability, a behavioral perspective. And in the last day, that is on 19th October, there will be valedictory session in which Professor Prasant Srivastava, Dean of Student Welfare, Hemchand Yadav Vishwidyale, Durg Chhattisgarh, present with us as our chief guest. And the technical session is addressed by Honorable Professor Rishikesh Senapati, throw light on curriculum, pedagogy, and assessment in, in specific reference with National Education Policy 2020. Each session is followed by question and answer like series. One. If you have queries, please ask <coughs> in the YouTube chat box. We'll try to clear, clear your doubts. Once again, I welcome each and everyone on behalf of Columbia family. Thank you so much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Now, I cordially invite Principal Honorable Dr. Arun Kumar Dubey, sir, for welcome address. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, Dr. Arun Kumar Dubey. Welcome to you all on behalf of entire Columbia College in this national lecture series, which is on National Education Policy 2020, a way forward for quality education. I welcome Honorable Dr. Aruna Palta, ma'am, Vice Chancellor Hemchand Yadav, Vishwidyale Durg, and our today's keynote speaker, Honorable Ramesh Chanji Kothari, sir, former Vice Chancellor, Veer Narmad, South Gujarat University, Surat, Gujarat, and all the participants, assistant professor, students who are, who are connected with us across the nation. I also greet Honorable Mr. Harjit Singh Pura, sir. Secretary, Jan Pragati Education Society, and everyone who has been associated with us in this lecture series. I would like to present the aim of the, this lecture series is to create awareness and understanding about NAP, understanding challenges, and evolve measures to surmount those challenges and find ways to implement the recommendations of NAP 2020-20. I hope this small effort of ours will definitely will definitely benefit the educational fraternity. Once again, I welcome to all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I call to Dr. Abba Bibe for brief introduction of the today's chief guest, Dr. Arna Paltamam. 
Thank you so much, sir. Actually, I was disconnected. There was uh, some internet issue. I'm very extremely <clears> pleased <throat> to present an introduction of educational journey of our today's chief guest, Honorable Dr. Aruna Palta, ma'am. Presently, she is the Vice Chancellor of Hemchand Yadav, Vishwavidyalaya Durg, Chhattisgarh. She is MSc, PhD in Food and Nutrition. She has experience, 40 years experience of teaching in various departments of higher education, government of Chhattisgarh in different capacities as professor, principal, and vice chancellor. She has authored 17 books. She is also chairperson for NAC PRT. She is the member of editorial board and peer reviewer for Asian Journal of Dairy and Food Research and Journal of Dairy, Foods and Home Science. She has published 68 research papers in various referred journals. She has published more than 500 articles on health and nutrition in daily newspaper like Deshbandhu, Dainik Bhaskar, Navabharat, Hari Bhumi, Patrika, etc. She has been felicitated by Honorable President of India for excellence in acad academics in 2008. She has accomplished more than eight research projects on various topics related to health and nutrition for organizations like UGC, CG Cost, MP Cost, UNICEF, and DST. She has guided and evaluated more than 50 PhD theses and above 100 dissertations at PG level. She is expert for preparing a state nutrition policy and plan of action for Chhattisgarh state. She is expert for midday meal program for school children, as well as expert for supplementary nutrition for TB patient of Chhattisgarh state. Ma'am, we are overwhelmed and blessed to have you in this lecture series, and I kindly invite you for your words of motivation. Namaskar. And a very good morning to one and all present in uh, today's uh, session. It's a great pleasure that Columbia College is organizing national lecture series on national education policy, and it has been titled as A Way Forward for Quality Education. I recognize the presence of um, the keynote speaker, Dr. Ramesh Chandraji Kothari, who is former Vice Chancellor of uh, South Gujarat University, Surat. The very uh, enthusiastic Secretary, Dr. Mr. Harjit Singh Hura, the Vice Principal of the College, Dr. Arun Kumar Dubey, Dr. Abha Dubey, and all the professors and students of Columbia College and all the participants too. You know, a new education policy has been talked about much in the past two, three years. And I would like to tell you that after so many webinars and so many seminars, people still are in a state of confusion. They are not able to implement it properly and as a chairman of NECPEER team, I always visit so many states where this policy has been implemented from day one. The, it was implemented as soon as it was uh, made and declared. But still, people are in a state of confusion because they cannot implement it. It is a very vast document, very exhausting document and they are finding it difficult to implement it in total. But if you talk about NEP, I may say that it is the most comprehensive, radical and insightful policy document ever written on the future of Indian education. You know, it was issued after, the, after 34 years the previous policy came into being in 1986, and this new education policy uh, came in existence after a gap of 34 years. And you know, uh, in every decade, you need to change some things. But our new education, but our education policy remained as such after 1986. So that there was a great need of a new education policy, 
And <clears throat> you know, the two main goals of this new education policy, this new education policy is basically focused on employability and entrepreneurship, which is the need of the hour. Uh, students, when they come out from their universities, colleges, they don't have any uh, work, they are unemployed. So this was the need of the hour to bring such a policy to uh, make the students more employable and at least to bring some entrepreneurial skills in them so that they can uh, in, in, uh, improve their creativity as well as their innovation too. And <clears throat> the second most important thing, which I think this policy is going to bring is value and ethics to education. People are uh, uh, like they are uh, getting degrees but they are lacking in values and ethics in life. So this policy also concentrates on bringing ethics and values to the life of the students, which is the best part of this policy. And um, I would like to say that access, equity, quality, affordability, and accountability, these are the important thrust areas of this new education policy. They are uh, trying to enhance the GER in schools by 100% till 2030, whereas for the, this uh, goal is about say 50% for higher education institutions by 2030. This is how they want to make education uh, <clears throat> like uh, more widespread among the people of the society. People only think that new education policy is meant either for schools or for colleges or for universities, but it is focusing on, besides school education and higher education, it is focusing also on teacher's education, professional education, vocational education, even they are thinking about technology in education. They are uh, talking about national research foundations, then promotion of Indian languages, you know, a lot of focus is on Indian knowledge system also in this new education policy. And even they are talking about adult education and lifelong learning too. So um, in the end, I would like to say that it is a very wide, very widespread and very exhaustive document, which has to be, <clears throat> which cannot be implemented at any institution or in any university in total within a period of one or two years, it will require a long period to uh, like uh, uh, totally adopt this policy. And we know that uh, challenges, they make us to grow. And this new education policy is a sort of challenge for the uh, academia, for the school education, for the higher education, for all the institutions, it's a sort of challenge. And uh, it has been always said that the, in the middle of difficulties lies opportunities. So um, we are still in the teething stage of new education policy, and it is our utmost duty to follow this policy properly so that we can get all the advantages of this new education policy. I would like to congratulate Columbia College for uh, such a good uh, brainstorming discussion, which, will, which is going to take place in the coming three days. And I'm also thankful to them for giving me this valuable platform to share my views with you all. Thank you very much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, Jai Chhattisgarh. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma Thank you. Uh, I would cordially invite Mr. Harjit Singh Hura, sir, Secretary Jan Pragati Education Society, for his speech. Sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Abhaji. Sabhi ko namaskar, Adarni Dr. Arun Palta, ma'am. कुलपति एम चंद यादव विश्वविद्यालय दुर्ग आज के कीनोट स्पीकर डॉक्टर कोठारी जी फॉर्मर वाइस चांसलर डॉक्टर अरुण दुबे जी प्रिंसिपल कोलंबिया कॉलेज डॉक्टर आभदू में मैम एंड ऑल रेस्पेक्टेड फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स मैं आई एम वेरी डिलाइटेड टू बी हियर इन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म 
uh, to express my views. And uh, I thank uh, Dr. Dubey and his team for organizing such a nice contemporary and relevant uh, this webinar for the participants of uh, Chhattisgarh and uh, other states. Because uh, there are a lot many things being said about these policies, but uh, we must bring some uh, uh, experts in this platform to know exactly about these policies. Uh, I will take uh, this opportunity to introduce uh, our Columbia group of institution in this platform to all. Uh, we started uh, our Columbia group in 2004 with a small Columbia College of Pharmacy, Diploma in Pharmacy in 2004. And uh, later on, we added uh, various institutes like Columbia Institute of Pharmacy, which is uh, now carries diploma, degree, PG, and P P PhD also, because it is a research, approved research center from CSVTU Bilai. Later on, we added uh, B.Ed., D.L.Ed. under Columbia College. We have B.Sc. Nursing. We have a Science and Commerce College. And recently, we have added uh, a CBSC School also. So in our campus, we are providing education from nursery to Ph.D. In pharmacy, we are the pioneer, as uh, I just told that uh, we have a research center also. And uh, we believe in sharing our resources, whether it is human or our labs, uh, because we have uh, beautiful labs, which uh, uh, no one is having in our Chhattisgarh. Uh, students from even uh, Medical College Raipur and Ames Raipur are also coming to our institute as we have a, a animal lab which is approved by CPCSCA uh, and uh, this is the only lab uh, which is in existing in Chhattisgarh and we have uh, professors in pharmacology also which deal with all these animals and uh, various drug activities on those animals. Uh, we have uh, some instruments very uh, useful and beautiful instruments in our uh, advanced research lab, uh, which is uh, benefiting uh, students and scholars from IGKV, uh, Raipur, Central University, Bilaspur, and even people are coming from remote from uh, Surajpur and uh, Ambikapur, and they are taking benefit of our labs. And uh, scholars from uh, Ayurvedic College Raipur are also coming to our uh, institute to take benefit of our labs. Uh, we are very happy to share our resources with uh, all the scholars and uh, PG students uh, of our state. Uh, our vision is to provide quality education in our institute. So we are providing uh, each and everything. And uh, we, our main belief system is making a good, competent, and beautiful team so that uh, our faculty members, which are backbone of, of any institute, uh, so that they can provide uh, quality education to the students and the upcoming generation. Uh, in uh, new education policy, as it is being said, that uh, we have to provide, uh, uh, apart from academics, other skills we have to add and uh, sports facility also we have to provide daily to the students of uh, the schools. So we started in 2018 our school and we are providing these things to our students from uh, 2018 itself for last five years. Uh, we are providing them, uh, we have a, a beautiful uh, uh, schedule, daily schedule. We start with yoga 25 minutes daily in the morning, then seven periods and then a uh, period of 50 minutes at the end in which we provide uh, uh, one sport to the student or uh, art and craft, music, dance, all these. We have got 18 variety of uh, these types of activities uh, and each activity has got uh, different uh, 
coaches we are getting daily on daily basis from Raipur so that the, our students can get uh, these skills apart from their uh, academics on daily so that they don't have to their parents don't have to go uh, anywhere to provide these types of facilities anywhere else so we try to give everything in our institute or a school itself so i am very much thankful to the uh, dr Pal palta madam and uh, kothari saab for joining this platform and uh, i know the uh, participants will definitely get benefited with the the knowledge or treasure of knowledge which uh, dr kothari and other speakers in these three days are going to provide to all the delegates and participants i thank you thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir for giving us the opportunity for uh, spreading the quality education uh, near uh, the rip near and uh, raipur i also uh, extend my heartiest gratitude to uh, Honorable Dr. Aruna Palta, ma'am, on behalf of entire Co Columbia family, for your pivotal speech and kind presence in this national lecture series. Thank you so much, ma'am. You are such a uh, embodiment of em em women empowerment, and we, you are the, such a inspiration to all of us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I request Ms. Gopika Sinha for giving the brief introduction of today's keynote speaker, Dr. Ramesh Chandraji Kothari. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gopika Sinha. Uh, welcome to the most amazing national lecture series on Na National Education Policy 2020, a way forward for quality education. I take this opportunity to welcome today's keynote speaker, Dr. Ramesh Chandraji Kothari, sir. He has completed MSc MS, PhD in Mathematics Education. He is the former Dean Faculty of Education and Psychology, the Maharaji Sayyaji Rao University of Baroda. He has completed a large number of research work and research papers. He has been a member of the editorial board and advisory board of several generals. Along with writing books, he has also reviewed books. Your contribution in the field of education is incomparable. While being the vice chancellor, he, he introduced 19 postgraduate courses in Gujarat University from the year 2006 to 2008. His, his contribution was also important in various seminars and workshops. He has honored with many awards. The list of these awards is very long. A few are Ramanujan Award and Teacher Education Award given by NCRT. Once again, I welcome all of you. Thank you. I Cordially invite Dr. Ramesh Chandriji Kothari, sir, for his speech. Welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. And a big congratulations to the team, principal, secretary of this Columbia College for having a national lecture series. So you all deserve congratulations. Uh, we are, I think, before time. So respected Dr. Anwar Palta, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Hemchand Yadav Vishwam Jalai, Durg Chhattisgarh, respected Harjit Singh, the Secretary of this Trust, Vice Principal, Principal Dr. Arun Dubey, Abha Dubey, other faculty members of Columbia College, and as told that there are more than 600 people who have registered for this lecture series. Uh, it is on national education policy. Still people call it a new education policy. It is not new now. It is national education policy 2020. Earlier it was NEP 1986. After 34 years, this has come. How it started, 
I think when Sri Prakash Javadekar, he was the minister for what we call Manav Samshadhan Vikas Government of India, he formulated one committee somewhere in 2016-17. Before that also, a committee for evolution of education policy was uh, constructed and that was under the chairmanship of T.S.R. Subramaniam, former cabinet secretary. So a committee. So how it started? They have submitted the report in May 2016. And after that, taking to the some inputs of the draft national education policy was ready. Draft, I don't know how many of you have read because that was almost a, a huge task for that. And after that, the mantralai, that is the cabinet has constructed a committee where committee for draft national education policy, where Padma Bhushan, Dr. K. Kasturi Ranjan was the chairperson. In December 2018, the report was, uh, they were supposed to uh, submit the report as they were told in June 17, that December 20, uh, 18 should be, report should be submitted. But anyway, the 15 December 2018, the draft was ready. And that was draft national education policy 2019. Draft national education policy 2019. So entire process began somewhere in 2016. The draft policy had come here. And there were 11 members in this committee. Uh, and, and, and Sakia T. Samsu was the OSD for this policy. He was the secretary of MHRD. And one member was from, uh, uh, he became the cabinet minister, I think, at a state level. So he resigned. And one more member also, Rajendra Pradat Gupta, he also resigned from this. Now this committee, the draft, I'm talking of the draft, 477 pages draft was there. I was also forced to read this because many institutions, they told me to deliver a talk. So I got a copy of it, photocopy. Out of this 477, 436 were the text pages, you can say. 436, other were the appendix, where so many things are given, names of the people, how they contributed. The four people were called as a drafting committee member. Seven members were peer reviewers of this draft national education policy, seven members. Five were secretariat for committee on this. Nine were technical secretaries and four from NAC Bangalore, they have looked after all these things, right? So NAC officials were also there for critical support. And on 11th July, 2017, to 28th October, 2018, means 11th July, 2017, to 28th October, 2018, more than a year, 14 meetings were conducted for this committee, 14, one, four. And that was for 25 days. So this is the volume of how things are happening. And they have visited almost 74 institutions. They have consulted 217 eminent persons and they have discussed. It's not that sometimes we comment that people are sitting in the AC room and then they are discussing the things and jotting down the things. It was not there. But as many as 74 institutions were consulted, 217 eminent personalities were also consulted. Discussion was held with them. And after that, these 436 pages had come out. There were 23 chapters in that original draft. I don't know how many of you have read. It was now online reading is a bit difficult. I don't know how many reads offline. That is also a problem. But <laughs> online is also difficult. So there were 23 chapters. And 
how to implement that also they have written a1 and a2 a1 was financing and a2 was pay pay towards that was the title and 14 appendix were given here 23 chapters part 1 was on school education part 2 was higher education part 3 was additional key focus areas and part 4 was transforming education so how to implement that also was written so then also people discuss like what we are discussing so the draft was also very well discussed and based on this discussion and outcomes few suggestions were there now after this suggestion the draft which was which was there that 60 page draft had come 60 pages it is photocopy so you can't say it is 60 pages it could be <laughs> it could vary but in a normal form it is 60 pages document where part 1 was school education you can't say there are chapters but there are eight parts i can say school education early childhood care education starting from that and last is regulation and accreditation of school education so right from page 6 to 30 some introduction of was also there two three pages then higher education second was there in that 30 to 49 pages were there where quality of university and colleges and fortunately uh, the, the 15 part is on teacher education and last part is transforming the regulatory system of higher education other key areas there were 49 to 56 adult education promotion of indian languages arts and culture and technology use and integration this was part 3 and part 4 making it happen how to transact this to this so like that you can say the 60 pages were there and introduction was also there and what was the need what we need they say that we need computer science data science so we insisted on that climate change was discussed in introductory part because earlier in villages i i belong to village and i know people used to say that in summer if there is a heavy uh, heat then they say after three months exactly there will be a heavy rainfall that's what our ancestor used to say we say that if there are more number of trees there will be a heavy, heavy rainfall but now all entire equations have been changed in the climate change it depends on the pressure in sea and rainfall will be there so there is a lot of change in the climate so that is also addressed then our resources are over utilized our resources are over utilized you can say depletion of natural resources wherever we have energy sources so that is also a sensitive issue then water people say samudra mein to bahut pani hai but what about the drinking water drinking water so drinking water is also a concern because hardly we have water and now at least a move has started for water harvesting and nec has also kept one criteria that they always ask for water harvesting facility right and health is also emphasized right so these are all the things but here what is the thing that so this is all about you can say historical background of this and then where exactly the stress was there now as a teacher and teacher educator as a teacher and teacher educator we should know that what are our goals everywhere the word is used when any any document comes revamping reorganizing overhauling 
So like that, all these things were there in NEP also. Uh, earlier also it was there. Revamp higher education. Create world-class education. Multidisciplinary higher education. All these things were there, right? All these things were there in national education policy. Now, where across, if you read across from primary to higher education, these are the, you can say, learning outcomes. There will be one institute also for formulation of learning outcomes. And that's a very poor part so far as our faculties are concerned. In 2010, I was given a project by government of Gujarat to formulate choice-based credit system. I started with art, science, and commerce. I think 10 subjects in science, nine subjects in arts, and five subjects, 23. And in each one, 20 subjects. So 23 into, so over 60 curriculum I was supposed to design with consulting the people. And the poorest part of it was learning outcome. People are not familiar with the learning outcome, how to write. People say it is a joint monopoly of BA, Faculty of Education. They only know this. Now, at least to my knowledge, that management people had started. I was teaching to management also, the research methodology. And I have delivered a couple of lectures on outcome-based learning. Are you sure when you entered in the classroom that what you are going to ultimately achieve? When you complete the course, so now another word national policy had, that is course learning outcome. Program learning outcome. You say B. Ed is a program. And your course is educational psychology. So course learning outcome. Actually, Indira Gandhi National Open University has done a very good job. If you refer to modules, for BA also it is there. I have for research methodology five modules. I have curriculum development five modules. I have higher education five modules. Of course, now they, they, they are old. But as and when I visit IGNO, I had a friends and students there. So I have not to pay even for the modules, complementary copies I will get. But they have written learning outcomes very nicely. If you are very much familiar with Benjamin Bloom, Online also it is available. One of my students search for it and online also learning outcomes are available. All else you write according to the Indira Gandhi National Open University. Learning outcomes should be very clear. So some globally, some learning outcomes are given here is critical thinking. I think we had been talking a lot. Uh, somewhere WHO, World health organization and UNESCO, they had also come out with soft skill, life skills, certain skills, life skills. The word was life skills. When the word life skill came, I was also under puzzle. What is this? Maybe some Gandhian thoughts may be integrated. But when I have read it, it was a decision making is also a skill and all other they have included. But now this NEP, has said that critical thinking, we should increase the critical thinking. Simply lecture method will not allow it to do. Simply lecture method will not allow it to do. You have to create different type of situation. And sometimes we do not appreciate the uh, response of the students, but they are creative. I will give you an example that one teacher entered into classroom with a map of world. Puri dunia ka naksha leke aaya. Or he asked one student, Sandeep, come here and show United States of America here. So Sandeep had a stick and with the help of stick, he showed that this is United States of America. Next question was asked to the Priya. Priya, who invented USA, United? Priya said, sir, it is Sandeep. And teacher was so, you, you can say, short temper, and he became angry. What nonsense you are talking? 
अरे भाई योर क्वेश्चन तो ठीक है आपने नक्शे में बताया संदीप ने ढूंढा तो दैट इज क्लियर यू शुड अप्रीशिएट नाउ सच टैलेंटेड स्टूडेंट्स आर देयर उसको अप्रीशिएट करना चाहिए सो टीचर का रोल रोल ऑफ टीचर इज दिस नाउ व्हेन ही इज थिंकिंग आउट ऑफ बॉक्स व्हाट वी आर डूइंग नाउ इज इज विद इन बॉक्स ओनली वी नेवर गो आउट ऑफ बॉक्स आपको तो मैं सवाल नहीं पूछूंगा अदरवाइज वाइल टॉकिंग टू दीपल इन ओरिएंटेशन i i i give them one question that you are a vice chancellor of the university and 1030 is the examination in 100 colleges affiliated colleges and paper is like what you will do i i want answer and i don't want to discuss also but people will immediately say exam band kar do but before that situation analysis karna chahiye maine bola 100 colleges if there is a stone throwing on 100 colleges some violence is there if 1 lakh rupee is the destruction in 100 colleges it is 100 lakh so it goes to 1 crore your single wrong decision so this all will lead to the creativity so now we have to go to our old culture where we used to ask certain questions i don't know i, I, I english but uh, there were two teachers teacher in gujarati we say mehta mehti i don't know that was also wrong their weight was 20 kg 20 kg uh, nobody will be there with 20 kg and their son they were 10 kg and they were standing on the river and the boat man navik bolta hai ki it takes only mehta mehti madmaniya tena be chokra admaniya thodi jile marno bar thodi carries only 20 kg and nobody can sit before 20 kg now you have to cross this four people teacher teacher's wife teacher's son another son you have to cross so now i think we have to frame a syllabus in that some this type of puzzles should be there if those puzzles are there they will enjoy like that i could see some of the smiling faces in one screen also so critical thinking once another boy was asked that uh, he was 10 years so how is old how old is your father the boy was asked by the teacher how old is your father he said 10 years teacher again get uh, what what nonsense you are talking so he said that my daddy become father when i born so uske as a father he is 10 years only but his total age if you count it could be 20 32 answer wise there was nothing wrong answer wise nothing wrong but we don't appreciate such children we want our answers i expected this answer you should give this answer then only you will be given the mark so critical thinking we should start on that and right from primary to university this has to be designed so you have to find out certain learning situations that you have to do second is communication skill of communication we had been talking a lot on this but when you conduct the interview i had experience of conducting at various levels to the top at the upsc also at gpsc also and many universities but people are silent either the language problem sometimes we give liberty for the language also but skill of communication so nep also insist on inculcating this communication skill and for that i always say that again the seminar should start which seminar what we are conducting no ha bahut zoro se main usko pranam karta hu ye seminar to band hi kar do once i went to a very interior part of the west bengal when papers were there the director of the seminar came and he said a uh, very very in a high sounding tone now you will be given 3 minutes for your presentation i said what nonsense yaar yeah. 3 minutes mein kya present karega and a parallel session wala seminar hai na still i am with national education policy on objectives and on objective of communication so there will be 15 groups in one day 150 paper presentation will be there how many 
and when somebody has presented a paper, he will move out, not waiting for his question, answer or nothing. If you ask him, where are you going? He said, I am going in another forum. No? But nobody can check. So this is not good. A seminar, national or internationally, 15 minutes is given for presentation. I have attended international also. 15 minutes. And in 90 minutes, only four papers are presented. In 90 minutes is a slot. Four papers are presented, 15 into four. And 30 minutes for discussion. But we have a marks. If you present one uh, paper, 10 marks for merit. Everything is lost. So we are lost with the marks. But we never bother for the credit. And those who are... Uh, once I received a phone, I was also a coordinator of a seminar. Sir, I have sent my paper. I said, fine, I received it. No, it was not online. Then I said that you can come. No, sir, I have sent my registration fees also. And I go, what do you expect? Then he said, sir, why don't you send a certificate? So without attending seminar, he has paid registration fees. And he said that you send a certificate. That, that, that no communication should be there. He, is, he was good in communication because very frankly, he was asking for the certificate and all other things, but communication skill. If five minutes I will take, I had worked almost 25 years for a, 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 a paper on seminar only. In my MA group, we had a seminar. Two sessions, Monday, 3.15 onwards. We have not written the uh, upper limit. 3.15 onwards, afternoon, and Friday, 3.15 onwards. Now, how we used to begin? If this is started, Arunji, what? Bada seva hoga. If this is started, but uske liye time nahi hai, manpower nahi hai, aisa bolta hai. Main to manpower tha. Head bhi tha, dean bhi tha. More than dozen committee mein member tha. Maine university ko bola ki Monday or Friday meeting hogi, to 5 baje ke baad hi hogi. Then, thik hai, mera domination tha, chalta tha. But it went all well. Now, how we were trying to do and what was the result that also I will communicate for 5-10 minutes. So still we are with the national education policy, learning outcomes of national education policy and second learning outcome communication. How can we do? We used to take one or two hours in group. There is a team in workload also, MED seminar, one, two, three, four, four people are there. They have to sit. They have to arrange the uh, entire schedule in such a way that from 3.15 onwards, they should not be occupied anywhere. So in the beginning, we used to teach them what is seminar. Kese karna hai seminar. Then, what is the role of a chairperson? What is the role of a chairperson? That also we tell them. What is the role of a speaker? And on the board, at that time, the computer and LCD was not that popular. On the board, clearly it is written that today is the presentation of Che Rupali Mukherjee will be presented, uh, presenting the paper on the topic. Who will be the chairperson? So it is written that Neelam Arora will be the chairperson in so and so. Clearly, and title is also written. An initiator also we, have, we used to write that Gopika will be the initiator. So what is the role of Gopika? Gopika will come and introduce the chairperson. So you come to know that how to introduce. Nowadays, people introduce like he has paper, uh, uh, Gujarati mein bolte, ashankhya paper, means infinite paper. Arre, yaar, infinite paper nahi hota hai. Aap bolo, das paper hai, pachas paper hai. You, you be specific. But people bolte hi rehte hai. Experiences of pata nahi. Kai baar to 50 years ka bhi experience pata dete hai. Huh? So how to introduce? So short and sweet. If some talents are there, because uh, we are introducing only MED students. So MED, ka, if he knows some singing competition, some dance, it, that, that can be done. Then it is chairperson will take over the session. Chairperson will now introduce the speaker. So he also should know. So it's a closeness. Ko ka. Because at that time, strength was not so high. 
Ahmed was only 35. You will say that if more than that, is it possible? But up to 35, we have managed. So chairperson will introduce, chairperson will then uh, ask the presentation, uh, presenter for with a time limit. I will be giving you 30 minutes. Nowhere in the international seminar, 30, 40 minutes are given. Our session used to continue not less than 90 minutes. That's why I say we have written 315 onwards. So 30 to 40 minutes per presentation. Now, how to write a paper? I think three, four hours, one complete day is given for how to write a paper. And after that, we used to give them papers from variety of the journals in a group, and they will be commenting whether, even we take one full day for writing reference. We normally follow APA, American Psychological Association. If you are a language people, you can go for MLA, Givaldi style, Modern Language Association. If you want that we are a little higher on that, you can go to Chicago or you can go to the other Harvard University. But we go for APA, American Psychological Association in Social Science. So how to write reference? That also we give. But while there is a workshop followed by uh, how to write a paper. So paper is given to them and they comment that under Dr. Kothari is written, oh, you cannot write doctor. You may respect like anything, uske ghar ja ke salam karo, but paper mein Dr. Kothari or Professor Kothari, we don't write. Reference also we don't write. So such comments will be there. Then we give them a reference. Nowadays reference writing is very similar. I think day before yesterday only I was talking to some college, Cochran. So you enter the Cochrane in the Google and you will get complete contract sampling theory and publication and everything will be there. So now that's very easy. So for that also we used to struggle. So one full day for paper writing, one full day for reference writing, one day, uh, half day for uh, uh, how to write, uh, how, what is a seminar, role of a chairperson, role of a speaker, then how to evaluate the seminar. That even, even, even we were not knowing how to. So over a period, we learned what to do. So we said that 10% will be for attendance. If 35 students are there, we organize more than 35 sessions because at the paper writing, they are also considered. So 45 sessions are there. If you have attended all 45 sessions, you will be given 10 marks. So we have uh, uh, work out on that. Then paper presentation, 40 marks. And overall participation during all 35 sessions will be 50 marks. So participation, may what you are supposed to do? Number one is asking question, which normally in our seminar we do. Look, question put them, but we don't evaluate them. Evaluation criteria, we have, don't cap them. People will say that why you selected I got only, why you selected will I only? No, such questions are useless. So write questions, then uh, suggestions, then reacting, then helping, directing. Okay, someone will say that you have to read this book. So many things have been written in that. And sometimes finding controversies in the paper. In the beginning, you start that India is in a land of agriculture. And at the end, you prove that it is industrial country. So you are contradicting. You have not taken a particular stand and you have not stick to that. So that is the highest level of, uh, uh, you can say, evaluation. Somebody is finding out a contradiction in the paper. That's good. Then reference writing. Then errors in the paper. All these things we have. So someone has to sit. Here there are 35 names. And against that, asking question, reacting, responding, uh, reference section, errors, and all that. You have to put tick marks on that. Like in statistics, tally bars. And after all 35 relations are over, all four teachers will sit and evaluate. Kya fayda hua? Many of our students had become a good communicator. Communication skills had developed. And we could see that. And in our, when we conduct the external viva, people say that you are doing a good job. Right? Okay, so that is communication skill. So if in a real sense, if you want to do the seminar, you call me, I will come and one day I will, one or two days, I will teach about the seminar. But this I had been saying since 25 years, nobody's doing this. Other seminars are going on. How many papers are presented? 
200 papers are presented in one day. Anybody can understand the 200 papers cannot be presented anyway. So no communication skill, nothing is developed. So second aim is to develop communication skill, problem solving skill, put before them the problem, not mathematical problem. I said that paper is thick, what you will do? Like that, you have to go for a problem solving, right? Creativity, creativity and critical thinking, that should be there. I, I know one good example I have nowadays, the, the our, our medias are very good. Once the uh, class three and class four, people complain to the manager in one company. What was the complaint? Sir, the toilets or the washrooms are not clean for class three and class four. What you will do now? I don't want an interaction with you, but people had suggested so many things that you fire them, you give a memo to them, you restricate them, nothing doing. The, the director said that call a carpenter. People were surprised that it is a matter related to the toilet. Why carpenter is called? He called the carpenter, asked the carpenter that remove the board from class one, class two to a toilet and replace it to the three and four. How long it will work? Because then also the workers will come to know. They do in din rehta. He said, often you have to do this. Don't bother for me. Aapko lage ke subah mein aise change karna hai, saam ko e change karna hai, you can do it. And within one week, things were clear. So this is problem solving, right? Cultural literacy we had been talking now. So many seminars are there. Indian knowledge, heritage, and cultural heritage, and so many things. How to do it? Again, we are going for Takshashila and Nalanda. What we will do? We will ask a question. The Takshashila was constructed in so-and-so year. Multiple choice question. I don't want such a system where everything will be dominated by MCQ. So global outlook, teamwork, ethical reasoning, responsibility. Now, cleanliness is much emphasized. Healthcare and cleanliness is much emphasized in this also. So these are, you can say, very, very broad outlook. Otherwise, you, if you read the uh, 4.23 in school education part only in NEP, page 14, then it is said that scientific temper earlier also in uh, 86 policy also it was there. Then evidence-based thinking, creativity, uh, then oral and written communication, health and nutrition, teamwork. Teamwork is not there nowadays. Even we don't write paper in teamwork. We criticize. If somebody has written the paper, we will criticize. But we will not sit together and write. Okay, this time you put your name first. Next time, second. Uh, huh? My many papers are like that. Huh? I, I put, uh, and after retirement, I ask my, stu my student to put their name first and second name mine. Nothing wrong. But that team spirit should be there, but that is not found. But anyway, all these things are there. Even on higher education, same thing, critical thinking, higher order thinking, problem solving abilities, this is there. Because situ so now you have, uh, I think recently I went to one university where so many engineers were invited for three days continuously and they are given the task, what to do. So in education also, you identify certain tasks that X is coming late every day, Y is dozing in the classroom every day, Z is not coming with the homework every day, you and, and try to have the case study, try to find out the thing, but that is not happening. Anyway, so this is what is going on with us. Now, uh, I, I think my time is up to 1.10. Okay, so what are our challenges? Now people say multidisciplinary university. What is that? I said my university multidisciplinary only, but only we have blockages. In my university, we have faculty of arts, Sanskrit Mahavidyalay. We have faculty. We have polytechnic, which never happens in the university. Polytechnic is not there. It is outside the purview of that. We have engineering. In engineering also, civil, computer, mechanical, electrical, textile. Chemical engineering, all things are there. Mathematics applied and pure. 
So is it not multidisciplinary? It is multidisciplinary. But what is the problem? A person from psychology will never come and teach education psychology. You are getting my point. Person will be there. We have a department of psychology. He will never come and teach education psychology. Our own person who had studied three credit course of psychology in BA and three credit course of psychology in MA, he will teach education psychology. So you are getting my interdisciplinary nature. What recently COVID vaccine, Corona vaccine, that was the best example. Somebody told me to talk on inter uh, multidisciplinary uh, approach. I said, I will not be able to talk. He said, sir, why? And this is not my cup of tea. And I told him also that if somebody is talking three hours, tell me, I will become to talk or people can talk anything, rubbish thing. No. So multi, the best example of this, you know, when COVID vaccine was invented, how many people were there? I, I was discussing with some people. They say we started with the botany people also because there are medicinal plants. We had zoology people also because ultimately experiments have to be conducted on rats and cats and donkeys and monkeys. They say we have biochemistry, microbiology. They were also there. We have chemistry also, because when it comes to some elements and all other things, compounds, what is the proposed net? That chemistry, microbiology, biochemistry, pharmacy and medicine. All these people get together and they have invented these things. Otherwise, you cannot invent. But nowadays, what is, what is happening? I know in my faculty, a person who is teaching in applied mathematics, he will never go and teach in uh, pure mathematics also. Okay, sir, my complete workload is 16 hours completed. I won't go anywhere. So that type of attitude is there. So now converting this into multidisciplinary is not that easy. But it is said that by 2049, multidisciplinary universities and colleges will be there. So now that is nothing. If you are from education, you have to go and teach education subject in faculty of arts. If you are from psychology, you have to do that. And when you talk of choice-based credit system, you have to go to anywhere, right? So this multidisciplinary is not that easy. Mindset, you have to change the mindset. If that is possible, you can do it. Another thing had come that is autonomous colleges and degree granting colleges. It's a great challenge. We have autonomous colleges. I don't know. I have visited in Araigada also, Odisha. I have visited recently St. Anne's College in three states I have gone and I have visited. These are autonomous colleges. But what is their status now? At present, if you are continuously getting A grade in last three consecutive cycles, three cycles, you will be given autonomous. So you can have your own syllabus. Only thing you cannot give the degree. You can conduct the examination and everything. I'm associated with two such colleges. One is in Jalgaon, uh, Maharashtra, and another is in Jammu. Wonderful. They are doing wonderful work. But ultimately, degrees will be given by parenting university. So if it is Jalgaon, you can have your own board of studies. You can have your academic council and everything. Examination you can conduct, degrees will be. Now, this policy, NEP says that we have to have degree granting colleges. What will happen? Hmm? We are in the age of privatization also. So, we have to think of this also. Anyway, so autonomous colleges and degree grant. Then, increase gross enrollment ratio to the higher education. What is it now, you know? 26 point something. In 18, 2018, it is 26 point something. So it has to increase to 50% by 2030. College going boys should be increased. I don't know, do you agree or you don't agree? I, I, I do not agree. I said send them to ITIs, not IITs, ITI, Indian Technical Institutes. We don't have a plumbers. We don't have many other people, electricians. A person who is holding a BE degree in electronics or engineering, when something is wrong in the house, he will call a person. 
he doesn't have any degree or diploma but he will do it within 10 minutes and he will go so increase gross enrollment ratio to 50% by 2030 targets are given in national education policy everywhere targets are given so how to increase not that easy more and more people should go to higher education then another point they have said only one line cbcs choice based credit system i think it was there somewhere in 2009 10 11 12 there was a conference of vice chancellor and ugc people and they started choice based credit system if it is multidisciplinary fine it's possible but because in choice based what will happen you are in a science you are taking a bsc mathematics degree but you would like to study what is psychology at least three credit course you would like to study somebody would like to study three credit course of uh, philosophy now in my department my teacher mathematics he has in a workload he said it is none of my business why should i go what to do we will request a people from philosophy and psychology he said i have already 16 papers why should i come and teach you hmm? i had a project so i know so I, I i said that now can we go to open universities in the state that they will design this course and they will uh, arrange some contact classes then the question came about the fees hamari fees kon dega so whatever the fees you are charging for bsc mathematics how many co credit courses are there with you so it should be proportionately divided and you have to give it but it has not worked out I said, can we have it on Saturday and Sunday such courses? By Raigad, my college has Raipur, my college has Vilai, my has. But sometimes they can come on Sunday, and some visiting faculty come and teach. But it has also not materialized. If multidisciplinary is there, and most of the private they are multidisciplinary now. Huh? If you are teaching in BBA, you have to teach in MBA also. If you are expert in statistics, you have to go and teach statistics in MBA also. there you can't say that my workload is over workload is arranged in such a way so now it is not the faculty x y faculty of science and commerce and all that now it is multidisciplinary anywhere you have to teach if you have a qualification you have to teach so this is choice based credit system ek only one sentence is there in national education policy that is about the choice based credit system will be standard not that easy i i i spent almost 5 years for the project and nothing has credit now we have a credit transfer you know multiple exit and multiple entry so how this is possible people don't agree to me i said in all university number of credit should be same if it is bsc you tell us that there are 6 semester now 8 semester every semester will end with 22 credits ugc now we are waiting that ugc should take the lead but how long ugc will remain we don't know because there is another agency coming you know what is that higher education regulatory authority national higher education regulatory authority we are waiting for that so then ugc will not be there so this will come and they will decide so establishment of this will come so credit at least see now let me illustrate with again igno you will feel that i am biased with igno but in igno suppose you are in baroda and you are doing your mba you have completed your one semester successfully assignments and everything and you are transferred to raipur okay raipur there is a center for mba so all your documents will be transferred to or data will be transferred to the raipur ek semester pada or you, you, you again you feel that okay now i am going to be transferred so you have gone to bangalore so your third semester will be in bangalore and fourth semester will be in chennai but you will get your mba degree now in our university is it possible in my university mba will be with some uh, different credits your university will be different credits paper title will be different so some sort of commonality is needed here though we oppose ke isme hamara creativity nasht ho jayega to chodo nasht hona hai to then don't talk of this transfer of credits 
सो इक्वल क्रेडिट्स होना चाहिए ऑल यूनिवर्सिटी दैट इज माय पर्सनल सजेशन नाव इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल एंड नाव यू कैन अर्न मोर क्रेडिट ऑल्सो यू कैन अर्न मोर क्रेडिट ऑल्सो कि भाई ट्वेंटी टू इंटू एट इज ए बी एस सी डिग्री दिस मेनी क्रेडिट सो बट यू आई फील दैट ओके सर दिस इज क्वाइट ऑल राइट फॉर मी i i can earn more credits also then there should be a provision for more credits also now parallel degrees are also initiated that morning you can study here and in the evening where there should not be any class so you are, i hope you are getting my point and i am putting suggestions as well as the problem so if all universities in india they have mba of this many credits fine then transfer and everything is there You you can change your curriculum a little bit. Syllabus can be changed according to the local needs. Nothing wrong. Within the syllabus, some contents can be changed. Nothing wrong. But this is not possible. At the present system, is there? Then the ratio of st students and teacher. Ratio of student and teacher. I I don't think that it is too much. In B Ed also, it is hardly fifty, and you are ten people. Fifty plus fifty, hundred and ten. I think ten or how many? One plus seven or eight now. One plus seven, principal plus seven. So hundred divided by eight. So one is to twelve is the ratio. In M Ed also there are ten people. In M Ed and for fifty students, so fifty plus fifty hundred. So there also it is there. In B B A, B C A, M B A, everywhere except art, science and commerce. Ratio is fixed. MSW, BSW, everywhere the strength of class is fixed, right? So that can be done. So by two zero two fifty, another problem that so this is uh, about the ratio. I don't know how it will be able to do at post graduation one is to ten, and at graduation one is to twenty. So whichever the course I said there, it is clearly followed in the absence of NEP also BBA. BCA, BEd, MEd, BSW, MSW, MBA, everywhere. Even in engineering, and even in post graduation, we don't have students. Political science hardly there are twenty students. Sociology maybe more. Gujarati there will be more. Hindi there will be more. Right. So this is a great problem. Then by two zero two five means within two years. At least fifty percent of learners through school and higher education shall be exposed to vocational education. Who will do the vocational education? Many people have changed the title of the college. Earlier it was BCA college. Now they say it is vocational college. So they say BCA is a vocational college. They have changed. I have seen. That's not correct. Vocation. Of course, vocation. We have been trying a lot. 1964 we have work experience kothari education commission then 1976 we have uh, social useful productive work work experience everything but no you can't you cannot ask your students to clean the room otherwise next day parents will come and they will create violence i used to clean my room in my school days also that training was there at the time i don't know what is wrong so do you think that cleanliness and health will come here anyway but this vocation so i said that iti should be standard indian technical institutes waha bhi we are not getting exactly the authentic experiences they should be exposed and authentic experience should be given to them but that is not being given things are not moving properly when you are labeled if you are labeled private there are two types of private where things are going very nice and other things money making is going very nice then 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 things will not come anyway then we are waiting for national higher education regular authority when it will come i don't ugc will not be there then icssr also will not be there NCT also will not be there, but day before only I, I have come to know that uh, more than one dozen people had come as a member of National Council for Teacher Education. 
So we should start here. Then now establish national higher education regulatory authority. Then also promoting higher quality of research. Research is in a very bad shape. What is the result of PhD? You know, hundred percent. Nobody fails in PhD. If you want, you can challenge. Nobody fails in PhD. Everybody pass. And if you ask what is the difference between small t and capital T, even miserably guides also will fail. I have done this. I ask them what is the square root p q upon n. What this formula is for? People say sir, pata nahi. T and small t and capital T in terms of the research, people are not familiar. But here now another uh, nomenclature will come: National Regulate uh, Research Foundation (NRF). National Research Foundation will come. So how to? Still, we have so many agencies. We are not able to do. But research proposal writing that is also a very poor shape. Research proposal. 80% is a rejection rate in research proposal. 80% proposals are rejected. Hey, anyway, and other challenges are grading system. Still, we can we could not go to the common grading. Can we have a common grading in entire India? Then only the transfer business, transfer of uh, degrees and all other things, exit and entry will be there. Still, we couldn't work work out. I know in one university. The interpretation of grade is different. B plus is seven. If it is eleven point grade system, B plus is seven, right? But from where seven starts, one faculty says it is six point five zero is seven. Another faculty says no, six point five five is seven. Third faculty says no, six point five nine is seven. So six point five five and six point five nine, they are not at all in the favor of students. They are not student friendly. If it is six five zero, okay, that is student friendly. But still, we are not discussing. So now you have to conduct a seminars only on grading, only on question making, only on writing learning outcomes. Right? Semester system. We are following. I studied in semester system, and I lived my whole life in semester system. But still, people want it to convert into marks. I, I, my, my own experience. We have giving grades, so we have written B grade, B plus grade to one student. So there was a phone call from district education officer. What is this B plus? I said it is a grade, and people say it is innovation. So we should use it, and we are using it. UGC also recommended All India Institute of AIU Association of Indian University also suggested this. No, sir, we want marks. Percentage. Now, what to do? So we sat with the statistics people, worked out B plus. If it is six point five seven, I said multiply by ten because eleven point there are ten uh, intervals. So sixty seven point five. That is the percentage. Then again, there is a query, sir. You have given sixty seven point five, but in bracket you have written second class because B plus falls with the second class. So it should be first class. You know, now there is no way to accept. So they have accepted for five six years, and they said that now this sixty seven point five. So out of what? Now in grade we have don't have out of. We have credits. They took entire BAD eighty credit course. So out of, I said, can I teach you something wrong? He said, बताइए. I mean, they will take it from thousand, thousand. So six point seven five. That is the percentage they have accepted. So we have to think seriously on semester system. We have to think seriously on the grading, definition of credits, and no marks. Transfer of credits will be only possible that B.Ed in Raipur and B.Ed in Baroda they have same credit. M.B.A. here and M.B.A. there if same credit, then only it is possible. So these are the few things which and. EP suggests for that, and we are supposed to do. And in teacher education also, still I am in dilemma. If you have knowledge, tell me, because two NCF had come by now. One NCF has come with three sixty pages, and another NCF six twenty eight pages on school education. How many of you have read? I don't know. 
I have not read. I had in my mobile, in a star message, I have kept it. But in teacher education also, what to do? Integrated teacher education. Now you say degree will be of four years. If you want to BSc, BSc will be four years. And you want to give the BA degree, four years, three years. Then why this contradiction? When a degree is of four years, BSc, BA, become whatever it may be, it is now four years. And BA, BA, three plus one year. Then that son will go where? After three years, where will he go to master? Because that master is of one year only. Four plus one. Where will he go to three years? So this nobody tried to understand. And another thing, who will teach the content courses? Patana, if you know, tell me. Because 2014, Gazette of NCT, after that it has not come, says that eight educators. So if I am a teacher educator, I will teach BSc Maths also. Is it possible? To teach BSc Maths, you must be having master degree net in mathematics, not in education. So this also we have to resolve. So these are the issues and these are the problems if you want to implement national education policy. Anyway, I took little more time. I was benefited that earlier also I was uh, told, but it is question answer session. Thank you so much, sir. You have given us in-depth knowledge or information, very valuable knowledge of uh, national education policy. Not only you shared with us the key components given or mentioned in national education pol policy, but, but you also have suggested some ways or very important ways to implement them in an effective manner. You also deal with the challenges and uh, <clears throat> problems that uh, will occur while implementing this policy and also give us uh, the mode to face or to, to surmount these challenges in an effective way. Thank you so much, sir. Now I invite Yogita Talukar, ma'am, for the question answer session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, very good afternoon, respected sir. And good afternoon to all of the present here. Uh, myself, Yogita Talokar. Uh, sir, very knowledgeable, valuable, and informative session. काफी सारे हमको जो NEP से काफी सारे जो issues हैं वो भी हमें जानने को मिले और challenges भी हमने जाने और समझे. Sir, कुछ questions हैं उन्हें मैं लेना चाहूँगी. Audience हमारे पूछना चाह रहे हैं. Sir, सबसे पहले मैं question लेना चाहूँगी कि how to distribute credits CBSC में और choice based क्रेडिट जो है सर उसको फिर से एक बार थोड़ा सा इलाबोरेट कर दीजिए थोड़ा सा समझा दीजिएगा डिटेल में ओके फाइन क्रेडिट का एस पर एस माय डेफिनेशन गोस माय प्रोजेक्ट गोस एंड गवर्नमेंट ऑफ गुजरात गोस इट हैज बीन डिसाइडेड दैट इफ इट इज वन क्रेडिट कोर्स इफ इट इज वन क्रेडिट कोर्स यू आर सपोज टू it is hidden that one hour student is also expected to spend, but that we don't consider. If it is one hour, uh, one credit course, suppose you are teaching in BA, education in emerging Indian society. If it is three credit course, then how many hours you have to teach in one week? Three hours. You are getting? Then you will ask that, sir, three credits made how many yes. weeks? Then in our India, we have accepted the definition of semester as 15 weeks. Semester is 15 weeks. So 15 into 3, 45 hours you have to teach. 45 hours you are supposed to teach. That is the definition of credit. Uh, in foreign countries also it is there. Uh, but definitions of semester changes. In UK and US they say, 16 to 18. In Japan, they say 15 to 18. We Indians are intelligent. We catch hold of minimum. 15 to 18, we catch hold of 15. So if 15 weeks are available, then three credit course. So you have to teach 45 hours. 
and in your syllabus also you have to clarify 45 hours unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 but now there is a rigidity that people say that okay you keep only four units i said no nothing some units can be finished in one hour also and some units will take more than four hours so don't keep it there is no restriction on on units whatever but you clarify the hours unit number 1 3 hours unit number 2 6 hours like that you have to clarify so when you design the syllabus at the top you write down the title in the bracket you write down the credits three credits along with the three credits you write 45 hours you write down the learning outcomes and unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 each unit you write down the hours also and we accept 15 weeks and one hour is direct teaching with that and if you are conducting practical it is 2 hours if you go to observe the lessons if you have observed 6 hours okay. it is considered as 3 hours workload only usme jhagda bhi hua hai msw wale bole hum to field work mein jaate hain to uska 3 hours ka ek workload gina so finally it was resolved that for any practical work 2 hours is considered as one credit so yogita ji clear hua yes sir yes sir thank you we have to go for 15 weeks yes sir And Thank you, if your BA starts in September, you have to calculate weeks from there only. But हमारे वहाँ तो क्या होता है? आजकल engineering में भी September में होगा, October में exam होगा. So this requirements of 15 weeks teaching is not happening. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, here is some another question. सर एनईपी में मातृभाषा में शिक्षण पर बहुत फोकस किया गया है और काफी जोर दिया गया है क्या भविष्य में हम भारत में अपनी मातृभाषा में एजुकेशन को कहाँ पाते हैं सर क्या इंजीनियरिंग मेडिकल की पढ़ाई भारत में अपनी मातृभाषा में होगी और ये कब तक होगी सर ये थोड़ा आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट आई है i don't know in policy also it is there wherever possible kya likha hai policy mein wherever possible we should try to go for matrubhasha okay so a thok nahi diya hai wherever possible ye sab to pata nahi kaun se pe ha wherever possible the medium of instruction until at least grade 5 but preferably till grade 8 and beyond will be home language ek okay. clearly likha hai wherever possible the medium of instruction until at least grade 5 5 tak to bachche ko padhao wahan but preferably till grade 8 and beyond will be the home language but sath mein aisa nahi hai i studied in gujarati medium madam up to 11th class okay. and i studied in english medium in ms university bsc 4 years ba 1 year ma 2 years and i taught for whole life in english and there was no problem okay sir so language ko samjho because wo jo maine bataya na main to meri manmaniya teacher and his wife 20 kg that is only possible in mother tongue rain rain go away nahi in india you don't survive without rain 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 come we need <laughs> so some things should be there so up to certain level and that's why i insisted in during after any p or before that only in uh, in kg section you know now kg will be of 5 years pre senior junior senior class 1 class 2 this 5 years where no textbooks and what we need creativity critical thinking there i have suggested three approaches storytelling approach and don't give the end of a story story ka end mat bolo leave it to the student and you will get 100 ends yes depend that is a creativity so storytelling and you can uh, 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 select a story from panchatantra and all other things we have n number of things so that is available so number one is storytelling second is action song हम कैसे वोट ऑफ थैंक्स करते हैं फ्रॉम योर बिजी शेड्यूल यू हैड कम अरे बिजी क्या होता बिजी होता तो आता ही नहीं हाँ ही वॉज फ्री शो ही हैड कम 
but in one college, university they started with singing a song maja padi bhai maja padi enjoyed aise 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 karke and they said sir vote of thanks is over so vote of thanks is given by action song so aise action song teacher ko at least 200 aa jana chahiye and third is indigenous games jo team work ki baat karte hain na jo pata nahi kaun kaun si game hai i know one gentleman uh, shri nagji bhai desai he is no boat but he can give you 200 games where not a single pie is needed so if these three approaches are thoroughly followed in this five years nursery kg1 kg2 class 1 class 2 communication also will develop team work also will develop and everything will be developed but nobody is focusing on that main to 20 saal se baat kar raha hu ke lag ji bhai desai ka bhi video bana lo but it has not happened so don't worry with the language but ghar mein to my kids are studying in uh, english medium but i we never talk in english in home ghar mein gujarati bhasha mein hi baat karo so don't worry much for the language oi इंग्लिश भी मैंने देखा है कई विद्वानों का इंग्लिश भी देखा है और कई विद्वानों का का मदर टंग का नॉलेज भी देखा है बट बोथ शुड गो साइमेंटेनियसली एंड गुड कम्युनिकेशन स्किल शुड बी देयर ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच सर द थ्री approaches that you just have said with us we try to incorporate in our b8 courses also and also teach the trainee teachers to uh, adapt this modes of teaching in their practice teaching school thank you so much sir now i would like to call uh, dr neelam arora ma'am for giving the vote of thanks bahut shukriya traditional manner <laughs> bahut shukriya aap sabhi ka uh, मैं अपनी बात प्रस्तुत करती हूँ कोलंबिया कॉलेज रायपुर द्वारा आयोजित नेशनल लेक्चर सीरीज के चीफ गेस्ट डॉक्टर अरुणा पलटा वाइस चांसलर हेमचंद यादव विश्वविद्यालय दुर्ग का हम बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करते हैं जिन्होंने हमारा आमंत्रण स्वीकारा और हमें अनुग्रहित किया मैं फिर भी परंपरागत तरीके से डॉक्टर कोठारी जो हमारे की नोट स्पीकर थे Uh, उनका शुक्रिया अदा करती हूँ आने वाले समय में हम जरूर आज के इस सेशन से सीखेंगे और उसको अप्लाई करेंगे आपका बहुत शुक्रिया सर आपने एनईपी 2020 के प्रावधानों को इतनी खूबसूरती के साथ और इतने उदाहरणों के साथ प्रस्तुत किया कि इस पर हमारी एक गहरी समझ बनी हम इसके सफल क्रियान्वयन की क्षमता को हमने आज बढ़ाया है और इसका सफल क्रियान्वयन करेंगे आपने जो टिप्स हमें दिए उसको जरूर हम फॉलो करेंगे वो हमें जरूर जरूर सफल बनाने की दिशा में आगे ले जाएंगे हम शुक्रगुजार हैं जन प्र, जन प्रगति एजुकेशन सोसाइटी के सेक्रेटरी आदरणीय श्री हरि हरजीत सिंह हुरा के जिन्होंने सहर्ष अपनी उपस्थिति हमें प्रदान करी अपने आशीर्वाद हमें कहे एक डिटेल जानकारी हमें दी और हमारा हौसला बढ़ाया बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया सर आपका बहुत शुक्रिया हम आभार व्यक्त करते हैं विभिन्न संस्थाओं के वो सदस्य जो आज हमारे कार्यक्रमों से जुड़े वो हमारे कार्यक्रमों से जुड़े वो सफलता का एक पैमाना आपने हमें दिया हम हृदय से आपका आभार व्यक्त करते हैं उन सभी सहभागियों का जो आज हमारे कार्यक्रम में हमारे साथ रहे हमारे साथ चले एनईपी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी पर आधारित लेक्चर सीरीज की यह पहली कड़ी है इस सीरीज का ताना बना तैयार किया था हमारे विभागीय प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर अरुण दुबे जी ने आपका बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत धन्यवाद कि आज इसकी पहली कड़ी हम कर पाए इस कार्यक्रम को वास्तविक स्वरूप देने के लिए महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका का निर्वाह किया वाइस प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर आभा दुबे जी ने हम उनका बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करते हैं मैं धन्यवाद अदा करती हूँ हमारे विभाग के टीचिंग और नॉन टीचिंग स्टाफ का जिनके प्रयासों से हमारा यह कार्यक्रम सफलता की सीढ़ियां चढ़ रहा है मैं अपना स्नेही आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ अपने बहुत ही प्रिय छात्र अध्यापकों के प्रति जिन्होंने जिनकी उपस्थिति से जिनकी सहभागिता से और जिनके एक्शन से हमारे इन कार्यक्रमों में ताजगी आ जाती है एक बार फिर आप सभी का बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत आभार धन्यवाद आप सभी का एक हमारी लेक्चर सीरीज चल रही है 
मेरे नाम से ही है रिलेक्टेड के बताऊं कि नहीं आरजी कोठारी लेक्चर सीरीज हर महीने की ट्वेंटी एट टू एट फोर ओ क्लॉक आज तक फोर्टी लेक्चर्स हो गए वी फोकस नाउ ओनली ऑन रिसर्च सो दो आर इंटरेस्टेड मैं आभा जी को उसका इनविटेशन और लिंक भेज दूंगा ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ एवरी मंथ फोर ओ क्लॉक इज फिक्स or research and if you can deliver one good lecture also of 40 minutes i will be happy so both the ways communication also and lecture also and participation also if you can do it sir 28 for o'clock sir aapki permission ho to 28 ko kyun schedule hota hai ye main bata do bhai sabhi logo ko 28 ko सर का बर्थडे होता है तो इसलिए उस डेट को ही हर महीने ये जो लेक्चर सीरीज है वो होती है और सर के नाम से ही लेक्चर सीरीज है इट इज ऑनलाइन ओनली एनी बडी कैन ज्वाइन मैं आपको भेजूंगा लिंक इट इज अप टू देम टू ज्वाइन ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू एवरीबडी थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू शुक्रिया सर बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू